In this video lecture, I will cover the genetics and molecular biology of cis versus trans regulation. The matter is relevant both in bacterial gene regulation, such as for the lacoperon, and in eukaryotic regulation. A regulatory locus acts in cis when its function affects only the DNA or RNA on the same molecule. For example, a gene promoter, a gene regulatory region, an enhancer, a terminator, the ribosome binding site on RNA, are all cis regulatory elements. A regulatory locus acts in trans when it encodes a diffusible product that can affect any target sequence regardless of its location in the genome. For example, the LACI locus encodes a diffusible product, the repressor protein, that can bind and shut down the cognate operator sites anywhere. Note that an RNA can also diffuse and act in trans. How do we detect cis versus trans action? Let's suppose we can look inside a cell and detect all molecular events that take place. Consider two bacteria, one wild type, the other a constitutive mutant at the LAC operon, expressing the Z protein beta gal under non inducing condition when the wild type Z gene is repressed. Now let's put both wild type and mutant operons in a single cell to form a marrow diploid. The two haplotypes haplotype signifies a set of linked alleles on a DNA molecule, display different regulation, indicating cis action of the locus affected by the mutation. Looking closer, we see that the repressor cannot bind the mutant OC site, resulting in expression of the green operon Z allele. Let's consider transregulation. Consider two bacteria with identical phenotypes. The constitutive phenotype, however, is now caused by a faulty lac I, the repressor, and the absence of the repressor. If we make the marrow diploid, we now see that the two haplotypes display equal regulation because the wild type repressor can reach any operator site. Both operons are off. This indicates transaction of the locus affected by the mutation. Looking inside the cell makes things easy. What if we have to detect cis versus trans action by the phenotype of mutants? There is a problem. Let me explain. Consider a newly discovered inducible system leading to accumulation of product S when an inducer is present. We isolate a constitutive mutant. There are two possible ways that this system could be regulated. The first is positive regulation. An activator transitions to active state when the inducer is present and turns on the S gene. In the mutant, this hypothetical activator could be frozen in the on state, resulting in constitutive expression. The second manner of regulation is negative. Similar to the lac operon, a repressor is inactivated by the inducer. In the mutant, the repressor binding site, operator or O, could be altered, preventing repressor binding and resulting in constitutive expression. Note that if nothing else is known, these two systems would appear the same. Let's compare these two regulatory modes in a marrow diploid analysis. Positive regulation would give us equal expression on both haplotypes the hallmark of trans. Negative regulation would give a specific expression of the mutant haplotype, the hallmark of cis. Here are the conclusions about cis versus trans determination. It is simple if we can determine how two alleles in a diploid are regulated. If they are regulated in the same way, it is trans regulation. If it is different ways, it is cis. The situation is more challenging if we can only observe phenotypes and do not know the allelic states. To carry out the analysis, we need a clear regulatory model. 
This may become obvious if additional genetic and biochemical information is provided. So, can we tell which of two alleles is expressed by a genetic approach? Yes, but we must be clever. See this experiment by Jacob and Monod. They used the LAX system and constructed the following strains, some of which were marrow diploid. They followed expression of the Z product, beta gal, and Y product, LAC permease, under non inducing conditions. The simple wild type displays no expression. The OC mutant expressed both Z and Y. Now, pay attention at this marrow diploid. The chromosomal copy of the operon is O plus, Z minus, and Y plus. The plasmid copy is OC, Z plus, and Y minus. These cells only expressed Z. Next, they tested a genotype where O plus was connected to Z plus and Y minus, while OC was in phase with Z minus and Y plus. This latter strain expressed only Y. The Z and Y expression pattern demonstrates that only the haplotype connected to OC is expressed. In other words, they could differentiate clearly between haplotypes. Therefore, they concluded OC acts in cis. These days, we can easily distinguish allelic contribution to expression by sequencing in identifying single nucleotide polymorphism, but this would be another story.